welcome to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Sarah, and it is my privilege to be the pastor here. You know, I ran into someone at the store this past week who told me that they recognized me from watching our service online. So hello, um, new friend of mine. Um, and that person said, you know, every time you welcome everyone to worship and you talk about your church, I think, wow, they sound like wonderful people. Well, they are. You are. You are wonderful people. And then the person went on to say, but, you know, I guess I wouldn't be a great fit at a church like that. Well, <laughs> we're not perfect people by any stretch of the imagination, but we are people who are committed to following Jesus. And we're people who are committed to forgiving ourselves and others. And we are people who are committed um, to being a part of seeing God's kingdom come alive in our community in powerful ways. So if that sounds like a community, a church that you want to be a part of, um, please consider joining us here at Trinity United Methodist Church. In fact, if you're looking for other connection opportunities, two of our Sunday school classes are currently meeting. The Crusaders class is meeting at 9 a.m. on Sundays at the church pavilion. We encourage you to bring a mask for that meeting. And then the Circle of Friends class is continuing to meet by Zoom at 11 a.m. If you'd like more information on either of those classes, please contact the church and we'll be glad to connect you. Welcome to every single one of you that have gathered. Whether you've come ready for the day or you're still in your pajamas or maybe you're watching on your phone in the bed. I don't know where you are in your process this day. I'm just glad that you're here and I pray that God will bless you in this time of worship together. Um, here at Trinity, we have a really special opportunity to give out um, scholarships to students in college um, and those scholarships are in the form of Brooks Scholars and then also Brooks Grants. And um, last year, our investment did very well, and so we were able to give um, more than normal. And so we have this morning a couple of our Brooks Grants recipients who are going to share with you a little about who they are, where they're in school, and what their plans are. So here they are. Good morning, Trinity Church. My name is Madison Lowry. Some of you may know me as the church's after school program coordinator, while others probably know me from my mom, Donna Lowry. I am very excited to be starting my senior year at ETSU as an elementary education major. I have already gotten a chance to begin my student teaching this past July at Andrew Johnson Elementary School. I have been blessed with an internship called the Cats Academy where I can complete my student teaching with the benefits of a first year teacher. I am learning so much about teaching already in a classroom and online. And I cannot wait to see where this fall semester takes me as a student and as a teacher. While I would like to thank each of you in person, I cannot express my gratitude for the Brooks Grant enough. So Brooks Committee, Trinity Church, thank you very much for seeing the potential in me so that I can further the education for the young minds of our future nation. I feel so blessed with this opportunity. As I enter the fall semester of my senior year, I will carry each of you in my prayers and continue to be thankful for this Brooks Grant. So once again, thank you and happy Sunday. Good morning. My name is Thomas Carter. I want to say thank you to the Brooks Committee for selecting me as a second year scholarship recipient. I've used the funds to pay for my textbooks. I'm a sophomore at East Tennessee State University. Currently, I've not declared a major. I always thought I wanted to go to medical school, but now I'm thinking about pharmacy or physical therapy. I have a daily regime of working out and running, basically anything related to personal fitness. I am an office assistant for the Office of Business and Technology at ETSU, and this summer I've been working at the Boys and Girls Club, and I have really enjoyed working with the kids there. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you this morning. Thank you again for selecting me. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Well, just as we are in prayer for our college students and all of our Brooks recipients, um, we are also continuing to be in prayer for our teachers and school staff, and especially for the school board members who are making difficult decisions right now. We want to remember to pray for young people in difficult situations and, um, and do our best to help where we see needs that we can meet. Um, so this morning, without further ado, um, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the call to worship. We gather as a community of compassion and hope. Jesus calls us to care for each other with love. By this, we will be known as followers of Jesus. 
May our example lead others to follow Jesus. Lord, open our hearts and minds to your word. Teach us to serve you in every way. Amen. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. I know it's been another interesting week. For those of you who go to school, you've still been going to school online, and it may be going good, and it may not be going so good. But I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to remember your teachers when you do your lessons online. And maybe every morning before you start, why don't you say a silent prayer for your teacher? Because they're struggling too, aren't they, Hadley? Yes. Uh, we're going to continue sharing about Peter. We've learned that that's one of Jesus' disciples. And today we have another story in our scripture lesson about Peter. Peter, and it comes from the book of Matthew, which is the first book of the New Testament, but it also comes from the book of Mark and the book of Luke. So it's in three of the Gospels in the New Testament, and I want you, after we hear the story, I want you to go to your parents, and I want you to look up and see if you can find where it is in Matthew, where it is in Mark, and where it is in Luke, and read the story because all three t tell this story. So it must be a pretty good story if all three of them tell. And we know that Jesus had some close friends, and we know that Peter was one of his close friends. And Hadley, you have close friends, mm -hmm. right? Well, Hadley, has any close friend ever told you to do something that you knew you better not do? Mm-hmm. What? Um, they, they wanted to play with me, but they didn't let anybody else. Oh, so they want to play just with you and not allow you to play with anybody else. Is that the right thing to do? No. So that was a bad, bad thing for that person to ask you. That was a wrong thing for that person to ask you, wasn't it? Yeah. So I hope you didn't do that. I hope you play with everybody. Well, something like this kind of happened to Jesus and Peter. Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he told the disciples that he was going into Jerusalem. And that when he got there, some of the chief priests and some of the people of the high and the law were going to have him arrested. And that he was going to be crucified and on the cross. And then he would rise from the dead after three days. Do we hear that story when? When do we hear that story? Easter. Easter, we do. We hear that story at Easter. Well, he was telling the disciples this was going to happen. And Peter looked at Jesus Remember, Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends, and he said, No, no, Jesus, don't do that. Let's don't do that. Don't you go. Don't go. Don't go. I don't want you to die. Don't go. Well, Jesus looked at Peter, and he said, Peter, this is God's plan. God planned for me to come to earth to die on the cross to save others from their sins. And Jesus looked at Peter, and he said, Satan, get behind me. Who is Satan? I don't know. Satan's the devil. The devil was talking through Peter, trying to talk Jesus into doing something that he knew that God did not want him to do. God had a great plan for Jesus when he came to earth, and Jesus knew that. So Jesus had to do what God had planned for him, right? Well, after the, Jesus told Peter about this story. Then he looked at the disciples in the crowd and he said, I want you to follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. And Jesus wants us to do that today. He wants us to follow him and to be like him. How can we be like Jesus, Hadley? We can be kind and help others. That's exactly right. We can be kind and help others and not tell them to do things we shouldn't tell them, should we, Hadley? And one thing Jesus taught us was to love one another. And we need, as followers of Jesus, we need to remember to love one another, don't we, Hadley? So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for blessing us with good friends. Help us all to encourage each other to do the right things, things that would please you. If our friends want us to do bad things, make us strong to tell them no. Help us to follow you and tell others about you and God's love. Amen. See you next week. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we are still worshiping from many different places. In our homes, in our cars, while on a walk, from hospital rooms, or maybe even at work. 
We miss being able to greet one another in person in the sanctuary on Sundays, and even scooting across the pews to make more room. We remember with fondness the sights and sounds of worship, and most of all, the people that make our church so special. And yet we know that you have the power to bind us together. We have experienced it throughout this season of being apart. We are one in you, one in your spirit, heart, and one in the body of Christ, each of us having a vital part of the whole. Thank you for every person who is listening and participating in this service. Remind us to continue to pray for one another and show expressions of love through calling and sending cards. Continue to give us opportunities to give in mission and serve the needs of our community. You are the rock of ages, and we draw on your strength and your protection now and always. You are a God who is always with us, always making a way, always pointing toward the hope that is just around the corner or right before us or around us. We confess that we do not always live up to the call, but we trust in your grace. We know that we do not always get things right, but when we follow your Holy Spirit to see glimpses of what it can look like when we order our steps in your word, it's a beautiful and beloved thing. May we wake up every day committed to following our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be wise and loving in all we say and do. Lord, there are so many needs, and you know every single one. So send help, healing, wholeness to all who have need. Protect servicemen and women in every place. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I'll be reading from the New International Version, Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life. Peter took him aside and rebuked him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. And you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it do for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will be reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, some of you who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning to you again. I want to begin by thanking everyone for their contributions um, to worship this morning. It's all these small parts that together the whole is formed. And I know there are many moments throughout this service where um, you might hear God speaking to you um, or you might have um, a sudden aha moment or perhaps a, a heart string is pulled. Whatever that is, I'm grateful for all the parts and pieces and people that pour their hearts out into making sure that this happens for us each week. So thank you to each of you for your contributions. I'd like to begin um, today with a word of prayer. Will you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, poor Peter, right? Um, I don't know if you're paying close attention to that scripture reading today, but poor, poor Peter. Um, last Sunday, um, we were um, in the passage right before this where Peter has this incredible moment um, where Jesus is asking the disciples, who do you say that I am? And it's Peter who gets the right answer. And Jesus just gives him every gold star possible. You can just feel Peter beaming as you um, read that passage in the Bible. So last week we had a beaming Peter, and this week we have Peter who has very quickly gone down to ground zero. Poor, poor Peter. Last week Peter had the right answer that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. And this week Peter just misses the mark. So I'm going to put some words in Peter's mouth because I think in this scene, um, it's pretty easy to imagine that Jesus has just said all the things that he will go through because he's the Messiah. And Peter pulls him aside and says, now, wait a minute, Jesus, that's, that's not what a Messiah is. I just said a couple sentences, ago, like a, a little bit ago, that you were the Messiah, that you were the son of God. And um, the Messiah is supposed to storm the castle. The Messiah is supposed to be the one that takes out the principalities and the power. The Messiah is the one at the head of the banquet table. The Messiah is supposed to do those kinds of things. And Peter um, is responded to by Jesus with a pretty harsh um, reaction. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Satan. Now, just last week, poor Peter had given the right answer, and we were celebrating with Peter, and Jesus had proclaimed that Peter means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. And then this week, the rock, the foundation, has become a stumbling block. Because Satan literally means the tempter, the accuser. So Peter has gone from being the foundation, the rock, the solid ground, to now being the stumbling block. Oh friends, how many of us can relate to our brother Peter today? 
when we've had experiences and connections with God that take us to that high mountaintop experience. And then not long after we find ourselves deep down in a valley, or maybe we have hit rock bottom. Or maybe something about our sin or our life comes to light again. And people begin to talk about how they thought that we were a Christian. Until they heard about that thing that we did. Or that person that we hurt. Or that way that we behaved. Beyond that, even from an individual level, how often can we see connections between the church living in this way? The church being a sign, a beautiful pointing to God's miraculous power in the world, and other times when churches or the church becomes a stumbling block. Gets in the way of communicating the gospel because churches began to squabble with one another. They began to argue about who's in and who's out and get into the mess of proclaiming judgment and st sitting in the seat of God and even going so far as to say what God will do and won't do. How many people do we know and how many of you have been crushed in that? Then Jesus goes on after he rebukes Peter to turn to the disciples and said, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself. You have to pick up your cross and follow me. As I was doing some word study this past week on this passage and um, just my heart was going out to Peter, I came across something profound. At least it was profound to me. And that thing that I came across was that when Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan, that the first passage, the first part of that, get behind me, are the same words in Greek that Peter issued to Peter a few chapters earlier when he said to him, follow me, get behind me, follow me, the exact same words in Greek translated in different ways into English. Jesus says, get behind me, follow me. And so even in this moment of difficulty for our dear friend, Peter, God is able to bring grace to light. Isn't it amazing how God is able to do that so often in our lives? When God squeezes grace out of the most difficult or most embarrassing or most mortifying or even the most painful situations that we find ourselves in. Well, that's true for our Peter today. Because when Jesus said those words to him, it would have reminded him of that earlier moment when Jesus called out to him along the seashore and said, follow me, follow me. You see, friends, the place of the disciple is always behind Jesus, allowing Jesus to be the one to take the lead, allowing Jesus to be the one through the power of the Holy Spirit to nudge our hearts, to reach out in love and in kindness. It's the Holy Spirit who gives us that little jab in the ribs that says, give that person a call. They need to hear from you. It's the Holy Spirit which guides us in every ebb and flow of our life. And so the disciples' rightful place, each of us, is behind Jesus, following Jesus' example. And if we are able to follow in Jesus' footsteps and live in a way that models the kindness, the mercy, the grace, the forgiveness that Jesus modeled, then we are right where we need to be, in a posture of grace and not of judgment. Because when we get in the business of telling Jesus or telling God exactly how things need to be, that's when we find ourselves in a position like our dear brother Peter to become a stumbling block, not only to ourselves, but to others as well. Dear friends, as we consider the cost this week for what it means to pick up our cross and follow Jesus, I want to encourage each of us to wonder at the places in our life 
where we might, like our friend Peter, be a stumbling block. And to evaluate the places where we, like our friend Peter, find ourselves as a foundation point, as a solid rock in a person's life or in any given situation. And I want us each to spend time evaluating those places and asking God to give us guidance so that we might more often err on the side of being the foundation, the rock that gets behind Jesus instead of the stumbling block, which gets a little ahead and a little out of line. Go forth, dear friends, this week in God's grace, because God's grace is indeed sufficient for you, for me, for our dear friend Peter. Thanks be to God. Amen.